Hello and welcome to our service of morning prayer on this 13th Sunday after Pentecost. It is a great uh, privilege to welcome you this morning and know that you are joining with us in worshipping our God. Throughout the service, you may hear the familiar sounds of construction. And I apologize for that, but our facade restoration project is now in full swing. This morning, we have a guest preacher, Father Lorenzo Labrija, a good friend of mine and a classmate from General Theological Seminary. Father Labrija is the director of TriTank, which is a ministry initiative of Virginia Theological Seminary and General Theological Seminary. TriTank is an experimental uh, facility where parishes throughout the country agree to run experiments in different ways of ministering in this new age. Currently, there are multiple experiments going on and we give thanks for Father Labrija's ministry in this area as we all seek in this new age, certainly this pandemic and certainly in the post-pandemic age, of new ways of reaching out into the world. So we give him a great big welcome this morning, all the way from Palm Springs, California. And we pray for his message that it may sink deeply into our hearts and resonate for a long time. May the Lord bless you this day and may the Lord bless all the days that lie before you.
Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with prayers. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. A reading of a portion of Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came into Egypt and Jacob became a sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies, whose heart he turned so that they hated his people and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Oreb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burnt up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. 
I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites had now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The Word of the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and his rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my saviour. This is my God and I will praise him. The God of my people and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armour have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown and a worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession. The resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord. The sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. 
Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with the angels in glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what he has done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Hello, friends. My name is the Reverend Lorenz Labrija, and I am a priest in the Diocese of San Diego. I'm the director of the Tritank Experimental Laboratory, but more than any of those, I'm also a good friend of the Reverend Canon Andrew Durbitt, a good friend of mine. He was one of the first people I met in seminary. I just love that man to pieces, and you are all so very lucky to have him as your priest. So I thank him for the opportunity to be with you all today and to just share some thoughts about today's scripture readings. What a week, right? Huh? Anything going on in the world? Anything urgent? Huh? Maybe hurricanes or riots, pandemics, fires. It's been, a, it's been a week, huh? So let's just take a moment and realize that God is with us. And that more importantly, we are held by God in God's embracing arms of love. So just know that even for this moment, all shall be well. I want to talk to you a little bit today about the gospel reading from today's scripture readings. In particular, there's one part in it. It's probably one of the best known parts, even by people who are not religious, right? When Jesus says, you must take up your cross and take it if you're gonna follow him. Take your cross and bear it. That is a thing that we probably have said, this is my cross to bear, or others have said about us, this is a cross you must bear, or we've said it to others. Like I said, it's probably part of the just common lexicon at this point, where we just say that as if though it was a part of life. But I want to explore that a little bit with you today because I honestly don't believe that it is what we think it is. First, I got to tell you that I don't think there's one 
one type of burden, one type of cross. I think there are two. The first are real crosses that we must bear. Life will have difficulty. Life will have pain. And we must bear those crosses. The second type is the cross that's not real. It's a cross that's given or handed or that we take up, but that's not ours. And to make my point a little bit clearer, I want to read to you a parable. It's a fable from Friedman's Fables. It's a great book that I got, I think, when I was in seminary. That I just want to read. And before you're like, wait a moment, he's going to read to us? How boring is that? Give me a second. I happen to be quite animated, so you're going to get something out of this. I hope. I hope I really do. The story is called The Bridge. There was a man who had given much thought to what he wanted out of life. He had experienced many moods and many trials. He had experimented with different types of living, and he had had his share of both successes and failures. Hmm, sound familiar? At last, he began to see clearly where it was that he wanted to go. Diligently, he searched for the right opportunity. Sometimes he came close only to be pushed away. Often he applied all his strength and imagination only to find that the path was hopelessly blocked. And then at last it came. But the opportunity, this opportunity of a lifetime, would not wait. It would be made available only for a short amount of time. If it were to, if it were to seem that he was not committed to this new opportunity, well, this opportunity would not come again. Eager to arrive, he started on his journey. With each step, he wanted to move a little bit faster. With each thought about his goal, his heart, why it beat a little bit quicker. With each vision of what lay ahead, he found renewed vigor. Strength that had left him since his early youth had returned. And desires, all kinds of desires, reawakened from their long dormant positions. Hurrying along, he came upon a bridge that crossed through the middle of a town. It had been built high above the river in order to protect it from the floods that came in the spring. He started across the bridge. Then he noticed someone coming from the opposite direction. As they moved closer, it seemed as though the other were coming to greet him. He could see clearly, however, that he did not know this other who was dressed similarly to him except for something around his waist. When they were within hailing distance, he could see what the other had around his waist was a rope. It was wrapped around him many times and probably, if extended, would reach a length of maybe like 30 feet. The other began to uncurl the rope and just as they were coming close, the stranger said, pardon me, would you be so kind as to hold the end a moment? Surprised by the politely phrased but curious request, he agreed without much of a thought, reached out, and he took the end of the rope. Thank you, said the other, who then added, two hands now, and remember, hold tight. Whereupon the other jumped off the bridge. Quickly, the free-falling body hurled the distance of the rope's length, and from the bridge, the man abruptly felt that pull as he did. Insistently, he held tight, instinctively, he held tight and was almost dragged over the side, but he managed to find his position. He managed to brace himself against the edge, and after having caught his breath, looked down at the other who was dangling off the bridge close to oblivion, what are you trying to do, he yelled. Hold on tight, said the other. This is ridiculous, the man thought, and began trying to haul the other in, yet he could not get any leverage. It was as though the weight of the other person and the length of the rope had been carefully calculated in advance so that together they created a perfect counterweight just beyond his strength to bring the other back to safety. Why did you do this? The man called out. Remember, said the other, if you let go, I will be lost. But I cannot pull you up, the man cried. 
I am your responsibility, said the other. Well, I did not ask for it, the man said. If you let go, I am lost, repeated the other. He began to look around for help, but there was no one. How long would he have to wait? Why did this happen to befall him now, just as he was on the verge of true success? He examined the side, searching for a place to tie the rope, maybe. Some protrusion, perhaps, or maybe uh, a hole in the boards. But the railing, the railing was unusually uniform in shape. There were no spaces between the boards. There was no way to get rid of this newfound burden, even temporarily. What do you want? He asked the other hanging below. Just your help, the, uh, the other answered. How can I help? I cannot pull you in, and there is no place to tie the rope so that I can go and find someone else to help me help you. I know that. Just hang on. That will be enough. Tie the rope around your waist. However, it'll be easier. Fearing that his arms could not hold out much longer, he did tie the rope around his own waist. Why did you do this? He asked again. Don't you see what you have done? What possible purpose could you have had in mind? Just remember, said the other, my life is in your hands. What should he do? If I let go all my life, I will know that I let this other die. If I stay, I risk losing my momentum toward my own long sought after salvation. Either way, this will haunt me forever. With ironic humor, he thought to die himself instantly to jump off the bridge and while still holding onto the rope, just as he was going down, he'd be like, ha, ah, that'll teach you, you fool. But he did want to live and he wanted to live life fully. What choice I have to make? How shall I ever decide? As time went by, still nobody came by. The critical moment of decision was drawing near. To show his commitment to his own goals, he would have to continue on his journey now. It was almost too late already to arrive on time. But what a terrible choice to have to make. A new thought occurred to him. Huh. While he could not pull this other up solely by his own efforts, if the other would shorten the rope from his end by curling it around his waist again and again, together they could do it. Actually, actually, the other could do it by himself, so long as he, standing on the bridge, kept still and steady. Now listen, he shouted down. I think I know how to save you. And he explained his plan. But the other was not interested. You mean you won't help? But I told you, I cannot pull you up myself. I don't think I can hang on much longer either. You must try, the other shouted back in tears. If you fail, I die. The point of decision arrived. What should he do? My life or this other's? Then a new idea, a revelation. So new, in fact, that it seemed heretical. So alien was it to his traditional way of thinking. I want you to listen carefully to me, he said, because I mean what I am about to say. I will not accept the position of choice for your life, only for my own. The position of choice for your own life, I hereby give back to you. What? what what do you mean? The other asked, afraid. I mean, simply, it's up to you. You decide which way this ends. I will become the counterweight. You do the pulling up and bring yourself up. I will even tug a little from here. He began then to unwind the rope from around himself and brace himself anew against the side to help him up. You, 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 you cannot mean what you say, the other shrieked. You would not be so selfish. I am your responsibility. What could be so important that you would let someone die? Do not do this to me. He waited a moment on that bridge. There was no change in the tension of the rope. I accept your choice, he said. 
at last and freed his hands. But this story, I think, really shows us is that we sometimes have crosses to bear that are not our own crosses. Again, there are our crosses to bear, our hardships to put up with, and on which we have God to, to, to hold us up. But there's also these other things that have been placed on us. These other crosses that are not really ours to bear. They could be from relationships. They could be from so many people, including our community. Jacob Blake was shot seven times earlier this week. Jacob, if he was the man in our fable, would have been the one crossing the bridge. But he didn't have a chance to hold on to that rope or to even have a choice to let him go. Society has chained racism around Mr. Blake. Society has created a system that upholds white power and white supremacy at the expense of our black brothers and sisters. That is not a cross for them to bear. That is a cross for any of us who want to do better to help dismantle. That is a cross that we must take up because our brothers and sisters are dying. When you are at a meeting, it is your task to ask whose voices are not being heard here. When you hear someone saying an off-color joke, it's not, enough. it's not enough to not just laugh. You must put an end to it. And we must take to the streets and we must demand change. For I firmly believe that that is what Christ would do and certainly what, what Christ would have us do. There are real crosses and there are fake crosses. Society has placed a fake cross on black Americans and it is now our time, our cross, to give up power, to give up our positions, and to go and help our brothers and sisters so that they can be freed. Friends, church done right is about liberation. It's about taking from us anything that is keeping us from God. What is keeping us from God is our position, our position of comfort and power, where we can look back and say, hmm, that TJ Maxx is worth more than that life. Or, hmm, just a bad apple. How many bad apples can there be in one bunch before you call the whole bunch that there's a problem? It's a problem that needs to be addressed. And isn't one bad apple enough? How many bad pilots do you need when you're flying on an airplane? It is sad what is happening in our country, but we are people of hope. We know that God's kingdom is a reality. We know that it is something we can work toward and that we will do that work. That's our cross. And Jesus says it is the cross we must take up. For those of us in 2020, in late summer 2020, that is our cross. And that, that's a real cross for us. May God bless us on this journey. May God help us carry the cross and help us find the way. And may we finally, finally bring the salvation that we all so desperately want. Amen.
Let us recite together the Apostles' Creed, Lord's Prayer and Suffrages. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, Increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of thy good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favour, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled 
and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, grant the good things that we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honour one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, grant the good things that we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs> 